So this is a video where I'm going to review all the exponent rules that are relevant for students in like algebra type classes. I do have review videos on exponent rules for like pre-calc and calc. So if you are looking for that, just FYI, I do have kind of a, a video where I review that, but this is specifically tailored for more algebra based classes. So let's just jump right into this um, and we're going to review kind of the main exponent rules. So this first one, the product rule. So basically if you're multiplying two of the same bases together, then you can add their exponents. So this would be x to the m plus n. The power rule says, so if you have this set of parentheses and you've got those exponents, you can multiply them. So that becomes mn. And then for the quotient rule, if you want to simplify those exponents, then you take the top minus the bottom. So those are three of kind of the main rules. And then we also have to review just a couple things about negative exponents. So with this, if I have like x to the negative n, this would be one over x to the n versus if I have one over x to the negative n, that would become x to the positive n. And so the way I always think about negative exponents is that these are really telling you like this was technically in the numerator. So this negative exponent sends that base to the denominator and vice versa. This was in the denominator. Now this has been brought up to the numerator. And then if you have a situation like this um, where you have say x over y. So if you want to get rid of the negative exponent, you can flip the whole fraction and then you can use the power rule here, which would give us this. Okay. So what I'm going to do now in the rest of this video is I'm just going to go through a couple different problems. You can go to divide and conquer math.com if you want to see the whole problem set. So starting with this first problem, so the, the whole goal with all of these exponent problems will be to have no negative exponents in the final answer. So in this case, so I've got these two coefficients, three and five. So three times five is 15. And then I can just add all the exponents. So for this, for the X's, this will be seven plus negative two. And then for the Y's, this will be negative four plus nine. So the final answer here then will be X to the 15x to the fifth, y to the fifth. Okay, so for this one, so this is just a use of the straight up power rule. Although the one thing that a lot of people forget when they do this is, so that third power, you have to apply it to every part of this problem. So I just wanna draw that out for a moment and show you exactly what I mean. So notice that every part of the, that was inside the parentheses, is now being taken to the third power. Now for these exponents, that means that we're multiplying by three, but for this two, I do need to take two to the third. And you might wanna just remind yourself that means two times two times two. Sometimes people will go two times three because they're used to multiplying all the exponents together. So just force yourself to say this out loud what this means if you are prone to that particular error. So the final answer here will be eight x to the 12th, y to the 15th, over z to the third. And now for this one, this is really kind of an application of the quotient rule, but also we are gonna start playing around more with negative exponents. So I've got 10 over two, so that's gonna leave me with just five. And then for the exponents, so I'm gonna take x to the fourth minus two, y to the seventh minus three, and then this final z to the negative fifth, so since there are no other z's here, all I'm gonna do is just bring it up to the numerator because that will get rid of the negative exponent. So this will just become z to the fifth. So my final answer here oops, is five x squared y to the fourth z to the fifth. And so this is kind of a theme that we wanna remember. Usually if you have kind of exponents, negative exponents that are scattered throughout the problem, you probably want to rearrange the problem to get rid of the negative exponents. Um, every once in a while you don't need to do that, but on the whole that's usually the, the easier way to go. Okay, so going back to that thing I was just saying about kind of moving ex negative exponents. So with this type of problem, you don't want to use like the quotient rule if you have positives and negatives, because what I tend to notice is that people get confused with the signs. So the more foolproof way to go about this is to take a look at everything that has a negative exponent and flip the position. So if I just rewrite this problem, so the four X to the third had no negative exponents. So that stays on top. 
and then this x to the fourth will come up on top as well as this y to the fifth. And then in the denominator, so the six doesn't move because the six does not have a negative exponent. And then I've still got this y squared. So look at what kind of moving the exponents around and getting rid of the negative exponents. Look at how that changed the problem. In the original problem, it looked like I just had to use the quotient rule a bunch. But now that I've rewritten this, I can see that actually the x exponents I can add and then I can use the quotient rule with the y's. So, um, and then the, the four and the six can both be divided by two. So my answer here then, uh, as I continue to move towards this, this will be two x, so I'm gonna add those exponents. This y, I'm gonna subtract off five minus two and then I'm still gonna have this three in the denominator. So in the end, this will be two x to the seventh, y to the third over three. Okay, so this problem is very much the same idea as the last one. So if this is something that you know that you struggle with, I highly recommend at this point that you pause the video, give this one a try, and then hit play when you're ready. So once again, I just wanna notice where there are negative exponents. So notice the eight does not have a negative exponent, right? It's just the x, so you're only gonna move the x. So that's a really common issue. Let's see, these all have negative exponents. So I'm gonna flip all of these and I'll go ahead and divide the eight and the 10 um, by two. So this becomes four, let's see, y to the fourth, y squared, z to the seventh, and then the denominator, I'm gonna have five x to the fifth, x to the third, and z to the third. So just make sure that that is actually how you kind of rearranged everything if you were trying to get rid of the negative exponents. And now once again, I can see exactly what I what I can actually do here. So the, the y exponents can be added, the x exponents can be added, and then I've got z to the seventh over z to the third, so I can subtract those. So just to be nice and clear about what is happening here, so I'm adding these exponents. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, and five x, five plus third, so this will be 4y to the 6, z to the 4th, over 5x to the 8th. So now for this particular problem, so now it's a little bit more complicated because we've got negative exponents inside the parentheses and then a negative exponent out here. So my personal like preference and the thing I, I tend to notice that will yield the least amount of mistakes is to first simplify the inside of the parentheses and then worry about this. So as I'm looking at this problem, this x to the negative third and this y to the negative second, both of those need to move down to the denominator and then I can divide the three and the six both by three. So I'm just gonna work on simplifying the inside. So I'm left with really just a one on top this will be two, we've got the x squared, I'm bringing down the x to the third, and then I've got the y to the fourth, and I'm bringing down the y squared. So now I can see how that kind of changes the problem, and so now I can add the exponents. So this will be one over two x to the fifth, y to the sixth, all of this to the negative second. So now that I've simplified this as far as I possibly can, I can go ahead and take that negative second into account. So I can actually flip this fraction, and when I, when I flip this, I don't need the one anymore. So this will turn into two x to the fifth, y to the sixth, all of this now just to the second. So notice that that got rid of the negative exponent. And now I can square everything. So this will be two squared, x to the 10th, y to the 12th. So in the end, this is four x to the 10th, y to the 12th. And just a reminder, the reason that this is four, it's not because I did two times two, it's because what does it mean to be two squared? It still means two times two, but it's not like, be, it's not because I'm multiplying this two by the exponent. I actually am multiplying this two together two times. Okay, so continuing on here, I highly recommend once again, if you're uh, kind of trying to review this, that you pause the video here, give this one a try, and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna start by just kind of moving things where they belong. So this, this, and this, these are all gonna flip their position. 
So this will be 2x squared. I'm going to bring up that y to the third and that z to the third. And by the way, if you don't have these in the same alphabetical order, that's okay. I just do it as a force of habit. I like keeping things in alphabetical order. And then I've got this x to the seventh in the bottom and then this z to the fifth. Okay, so now I want to show you a little trick of how you can make these a little bit easier. I've talked about this in, in other videos too. So we're going to kind of change up the, the quotient rule a little. So typically with the quotient rule, you would have the top minus the bottom. But notice if I take 2 minus 7, that's going to give me a negative exponent, and then I'll end up having to put that back in the denominator. So uh, another way that you can approach the quotient rule that, that's much faster, actually, is so looking at the x's, notice where there are more x's. Are there more on top or on bottom? There's more on bottom. So what that means, then, is that your x answer should end up in the denominator. So I'll be nice and clear about what I mean about that. So let's see, this is going to be, I've got my x's in the bottom, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 7 minus the 2, because that's where the answer should end up. And then if I, let's see, the, let's see, the y cubed has no nothing to pair it with, and then I've got, if I look at the z's, so where are there more z's, on top or on bottom? So in this particular problem, there are more z's on bottom, so that's really where the answer should go. And so now, let's see, I'll see if I can not run out of room here. Let's see, this will be x to the fifth, um, oops, z squared, and now all of that to the negative third. So now I've, I've simplified this as much as I can, so now I can go ahead and work on this negative third power. So I can flip the whole thing, so this is going to be 3x to the fifth y, uh, z squared, I don't know why I keep writing y, over 2y to the third, and now all of that to the third power. So remember, you are going to have to take 3 to the third. That means 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. This will be x to the 15th, z to the 6th. So there's the top. And now if I take 2 to the third, that's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then I can multiply that exponent, so this will be y to the ninth. And so there you go. Okay, so I know that these are pretty challenging, so I have just one more of this type. So once again, I highly recommend that you pause the video here and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so using the same strategy of just trying to move everything with a negative exponent. Oops, let me grab my, my green color here. So this this and this all need to flip their position. So now I'm going to have 5z to the third, z to the seventh, over x cubed, x squared, y to the fourth, y to the third, and then all of that to the negative second. Okay, so now in this case I don't have to use the quotient rule at all. I can actually just use the, the, um, the product rule. So this is going to give me 5z to the 10th, x to the 5th, remember you're adding all the exponents, and then y to the 7th, and now I can deal with that negative second power. So I can flip the whole thing, so let's see, I'll flip this, so this becomes x to the 5th, y to the 7th, over 5z to the 10th. Now all of that's squared, and now I can square all of this. So this will become x to the 10th, so now I'm multiplying all the exponents by 2. y to the 14th. Now, 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25, and then z to the 20th. And so that's it. So that concludes this quick review of just all the exponent rules. If you feel like you really need to see more examples, I have tons of videos with tons of examples. So feel free to check those out, but hopefully this was a helpful, just very quick reminder of how these rules work.